Hello everyone and welcome to continuing development of my version of SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy. As you can see I've made a few changes. We've also added the B9 procedural wings but among the changes that are integral to the parts that I've made are the sort of fairing parts for the fins and also the RCS thrusters. You can sort of see I decided to place them over here because they're at least center lined that way and that seemed logical. I don't know if that's where they're going to be placed. On the shuttle, they're not placed like that. They're placed on the top of the nose, on the side of the nose, and also on those pods uh, by the tail. And so we've got an RCS thruster here. I have no idea what these bulges on the top of Starship are supposed to be, but I've decided that they are now RCS pods. <laughs> um, so they've got the RCS thrusters there. We're going to have to test these RCS thrusters I have not done so yet, that is what we're doing in this video. Otherwise the B9 procedural wings, well, they don't actuate in the direction that they're supposed to, right? They're supposed to be, these are supposed to be tilting sort of up and down. These, uh, the way the all moving wings here are going to tilt is like an elevon or something like that, like a regular fin. So how to change that? I tried, uh, I thought about using um, control surface, that would have tilted in the right direction, but it wasn't big enough. Now, you, uh, the B9 procedural control surfaces are limited in size, so it wouldn't extend more than past like this line here, and so we wouldn't have the full fin, and I've, you can't really layer the, you can't attach those control surfaces to each other, I don't think. So, since they don't allow for that, we'll have to... Well, we'll have to see, but at least this fin arrangement, even if it's not actuating in the right direction, will allow us to assess the center of mass and center of lift, right? And so that's something I'll do um, possibly partly in this video, but more likely elsewhere. I haven't been able to get the internals on the crew pod working right yet, or the hatch, uh, but I we will be testing with a payload here. We've got a 100 ton tank of methane and oxygen there. So this time we're launching with that. And somebody noted that we uh, probably stopped the Super Heavy too early. That's probably the case uh, in the previous video. So this time I've decided that we'll reserve 8% of the fuel load in Super Heavy, which equates to 14 seconds. As you can see, I've placed the fins. They're integral to the body, they're not separable. And uh, those have colliders on them. And I don't have the launch clamps, so we'll test whether we can stand on those fins, which is important because they're basically the landing legs. And um, we've got the this uh, portion of Super Heavy extended out to fit the engines a little bit better. As somebody noted that that was the case and I looked at the images and it was in fact the case that it has a skirt. It's just not very easy to tell that it has a skirt because of the coloration of the body. I haven't fixed the, uh, the seam down there. So far, there isn't any RCS thruster on Super Heavy, so we can't land it yet. And um, so that'll be coming up later. But I have no idea where the RCS thrusters are on any of this. And so uh, somebody said they knew, but then they didn't say where they were. So I don't know whether they knew or not, whether they were being sarcastic or something. But um, yeah, so I just placed the RCS thrusters where I thought was reasonable. There's a catch, though. There's one set of RCS thrusters that I have not placed on the Starship's body that it needs. And those are the ones that would face downward, that would point downward and push it up, right? Uh, in translation mode, not rotation. So uh, we cannot translate in that direction, pushing up. And that's because those are the weirdest ones to place when you think about it, because um, the nozzle exit would be, you know, Potentially, if you place them in the wrong location, they're going to be exposed to all the heating. And you could do that. On the shuttle, what they did was they put them on the side of the nose and had them point down at an oblique angle. But I don't know how how it's supposed to be on Starship. So anyway, it's likely that the RCS arrangement we've got here is completely wrong since there's functionally infinite ways of placing these darn things. And so, yeah, we will see. Another change I made was uh, adding a fuel cell to this, though I don't see it right now. Hopefully it's on there. And yeah, this uh, one, I also uh, fixed up the stock configuration of this. Hopefully that'll help. 
but there is a fuel cell, is there? Resource converter, this one. Methane oxygen to electric charge. So we'll test that out too. So we've got a bunch of stuff that on our uh, test list, our goals for this launch. So let's launch it. Okay, so as we can see, we are standing on the fins. Uh, they don't have any suspension or anything, so there is that minor issue. But um, yep, yeah, that part is good. Camera's still weird. Again, the internals are not the internals that I meant for them to be. Um, we, uh, we're not using KOS. I'm just going to launch with MechJeb. I haven't written up a special KOS script for this yet. Okay, so uh, SAS on, throttle is up. Someone mentioned the lag. Yeah, 37 engines will create some lag for you. So ignition. Now without launch clamps, it's going to start going up immediately once it gets enough thrust. As it does. It's carrying a payload this time, the 100 tons. That's locked right now. So its thrust weight ratio is rough. But again, this is the low end of expectations for what kind of thrust these engines will get. This is what they're already, they already have been tested at. And we can uh, expect that they will be better performing later on. And I'll bump it up if it looks like we need to. So, and the, if you get the um, real engines pack and use these Raptor engines, these Raptor engines are from the real engine pack, um, you will have much better performance than I do here. I edited them to have worse performance. So, yeah. So we're gonna wait until there's uh, 14 seconds left there. And then we'll stage. I also added power consumption on both the Super Heavy and the Starship. Which will require the use of the fuel cells. So the fuel cell is only on Starship. Super Heavy should be able to manage on its internal batteries. Well, aerodynamically we're okay so far, right? I mean, we've got the fins on Starship and everything. So we have to be concerned about that. I checked in the SPH and right now with the center of mass on on Starship where it is fully fueled the center of lift is behind the center of mass I would expect that the center of lift would remain behind the center of mass as it gets empty because the only other mass really except for the tanks is the fuel pod and not the fuel pod, the crew pod. And so the crew pod would net net bring the center of mass forward. And then we're going to use a um, COM offset mechanism to move it back. Do we have that here already? Oh, I thought I configured it, but maybe I need to configure it in a realism overhaul way for it to continue reading it. We deviated from the prograde vector, but it didn't seem to have any aerodynamic problems. Uh, the flame is a little bit anemic down there. I'll bump it up just for the extra lag, but it doesn't seem to really produce that many particles. That's weird. Might have to modify these plumes, these engines, uh, to have a more robust plume for future purposes. So I understand that uh, Tundra Exploration has a version of Starship and it was negligent of me to not have checked that in the first place um, and so feel sort of guilty about wasting my time on this because there is already a version out there. Could have done something else and just used that version but well I guess since I started on this, I might as well. Oh, well, I mean, the aerodynamic surfaces are actually actuating, so of course they can hold the whole situation. That does help. I do not know if uh, Tundra Exploration has some better data on where the RCS 
thrusters are supposed to be. As far as the uncrewed cargo version is concerned, I I don't think I'm gonna spend much time making that because frankly the cargo hold as it is is fairly roomy. Um, you could put an additional, of course, cargo, uh, sorry, uh, crew area in there for more living space, or you can put a pretty substantial payload, like this 100 ton uh, liquid methane, liquid oxygen tank. So I don't feel like, unless you're trying to fit Skylab in there, I have no idea what you would want the extra space for. Um, maybe you just don't want to carry the crew pod up there, but there aren't a whole lot of payloads that would require more than a hundred tons of cargo space so yeah I, I really don't know why I would need that <laughs> so okay 22 seconds we'll stop it at 14 seconds which again should be 8% okay shut down separation and ignition So, we've reserved some fuel. It might be a little bit tight though. Um, let me see. I'm gonna quickly jump to here. It's 2,377 meters per second, so maybe, maybe that's enough. Okay, uh, at this point, we see that our electric charge consumption is 1.82. We can activate the fuel cell that's the internal batteries would run that for a fairly long time like a hundred hours but start fuel cell and we see the net draw is 0 0.02 hmm i think i failed to account for maybe the kerbal consumption or something so i'll bump up the fuel cell that it should be 12 kilowatts it shouldn't be yeah i thought it would be producing quite a bit more than this or maybe that's because it's so close to the top and it's just not filling the extra? I don't know. Well, this is why we have to check things out. We probably don't want the crew pod to separate at the same time we activate the RCS thrusters, so let's not do that. Actually, let's keep up the pitch, because its thrust-to-weight ratio isn't great at this point, especially now that it's carrying payload. Let's have it roll around, though. So, taking a look at the dry mass, oh, uh, well, this is the dry mass with the 100 ton payload, so we're basically close to 120 ton dry mass, and then a 100 ton payload is what you're looking at there. Um, uh, actually, it's a little bit more than 120, because I think this number here is, includes the crew pod, so 139 ton plus a 100 ton payload. Ah, uh, do I not have tight life support in here? Well, oxygen is being consumed. Oh, this has kerbalism in. Okay, okay. The same difference, basically. Taking a look here, we've got 16 crew members here. Uh, there we go. Um, it says, uh, food, water, and oxygen, 35 days built in. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix what it says about living space and comfort and all. Um, we can probably... Well, I mean, I don't know how to build in a panorama, but I'll have to tell it that they've got a panorama view that will help. Call home should be possible. It should have internal comms. Um, so I'll fix some of that. Exercise, that'll have to require a separate module in the cargo bay if you want exercise. I don't think the crew pod is meant for that particularly well. We're carrying lithium hydroxide or no? It appears that we are not. Well, I'll need to add lithium hydroxide. Let me let me make a note to self. Well, at this point, I'll shut down the surface ones. One thing I should do is lighten up the dry mass of this body because that dry mass didn't include the mass of the fins. I mean, it it includes the mass of the fins, so I need to subtract that out. It's probably a better way of saying that. That's funny, I don't know why carbon dioxide isn't being generated, though, by Kerbalism. Oh, anyway, let's shut down there. 
So yep, 100 ton payload confirmed, and that's with pessimistic numbers for the engines, or at least numbers that the engines have been tested at two years ago. And also, we've got the payload and everything, so uh, yes, it can do that. Let's see, 2,170 meters per second available in this case. Let me move that fuel into the main tank. Okay, so fuel cell has been tested. RCS time. So let's see. Well, that looks good. Let's see how quickly it turns retrograde. Hmm. I think I might need them more powerful than they are now, huh? They're at 1.2 kilonewtons. Oop, I really don't need those gimbling. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just lock those. Let's see if the RCS can hold it when I use the engines, when the engines don't have gimbling, I suppose. Oh, well, that was okay. Alright, prograde, please. I doubt these thrusters, as weak as they are, are going to be enough to hold it on the way down. And I have no idea what our center of mass and center of lift are now. Well, I know what our center of lift is, because that hasn't changed. Um, the center of mass will be further forward, which might mean it's nose-heavy. Now, once we get into the lower part of the atmosphere, there's no way we have yaw control. <laughs> so, I mean... Uh, the only yaw control we have is the RCS thrusters, and they'll be horribly overmatched by the atmosphere. Oh, I did sort of correct the back end and flatten it out here. I don't think the contours are quite what we see in the preview videos. Not videos, uh, or images. I think it comes in at a much higher pitch than the shuttle would, so we'll go with 60. I don't know exactly what I should set it at. Oh, it's not looking too bad. It's at the right spot and rolling properly. Okay, well, it's still sort of trying to figure out roll, but it's more or less settled where I wanted it to be. Apologies that I'll be in the dark and we're not aiming for Cape Canaveral at all, but I just... This is a cursory test. Well, the sun is setting on us. We're obviously heavier than normal because we're still carrying that 100 tons of fuel here. We could dump it. But we'll see what the effect is carrying this amount back down. Okay, it looks like we've sort of settled down on roll now. Which makes sense because we've got some grip of the on the atmosphere. 108 kilometers in descending. It's still wiggling though. Okay, we're seeing some use of pitch authority here. It seems like it's trying to pull up, which makes, yeah, I expected the nose to be heavy, so it's pulling up. Yeah. That seems to be right. Well, we're uh, definitely red. <laughs> The body is very red now. The the wing pieces are not. These are the space plane all moving B9 procedural wings. Actually, in terms of pitch, the lower we go, the better off the wing pieces, the wings will be in terms of controlling that. But I guess it's sort of the middle area where they're going to it's going to have problems where there's not enough air. And there's not enough RCS power. Well, pitch is maxed out. But we're still holding 60 degree pitch here. It's still holding. Amazingly enough. I guess we have just enough pitch authority. <laughs> not sure. Well, we've got some flame effects now on top of it already being red. Well, it remains good at 64 kilometers. We're a bit heavy, but we're getting enough drag. The normal estimate for when it's okay is 
if you multiply the surface velocity by 10 times, it shouldn't be more than the height. That is a good thing to maintain. But of course, we're it, it looks like it's got enough pitch authority, but these back ones aren't even supposed to tilt this way, as far as I know. So, yeah. Hmm. It's possible that we could come in so straight that we don't even have to worry about yaw, but wouldn't bet on it. We should get the surface engines ready. I, We're not going to be able to spin onto our tail or anything, but hey. Okay, well, this has gone much better than expected. We're approaching the point where the shuttle would start pitching down in order to make use better use of its aerodynamic surfaces, especially the vertical stabilizer. We'll see how this goes. We certainly can't pitch up anymore. Now, if we did have the ability to shift our center of mass, as we should, then we, that would flip us to tail first. I don't think that it does it this early, but I probably wouldn't do it as late as SpaceX intends to do it with their Starship. Probably I would do it earlier. Okay, well, if we don't pitch down, we're going to end up stalling here. Well, now it's an airplane. <laughs> It's controlling y'all remarkably well. I wonder if we could flip it onto its tail or not. I can't pull up any better than that. It's not using all of its pitch authority though. Hold on. Okay, uh, SAS. Oh, I told I ripped off all the things. Okay, hold on. But uh, oh, I ripped off the engines too. Oh gosh darn it. There was hope there. Brief hope. All right. Well, I mean, that went better than I thought it would. And it's actually going tail first right now after it ripped everything off, so that's interesting. But with that said, I think I'll end it here. I'll, of course, provide the updated parts in the video description. And uh, maybe you can... Oh, I think I lost a crew pod somewhere. Oh, here it is. Gosh darn it, I didn't put parachutes on it. Just when it could have used parachutes. It actually successfully aborted in a way. But alright, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.